Hi, BookTube. Um, it's Nathan, the Rambling Reviewer, back with another video today uh, for New World's November. I already did a video today talking about uh, some books I checked out from the library slash bought from the library book sale, but I want to do another one going over some of the stuff I've read today. Well, I'm actually going to go over both the two both two things I've read today, but I plan to read more afterwards. So you might ask, okay, Nathan, why don't you wait until the end of the night uh, and do a big video with more than just two stories in it? And to answer uh, that question... Uh, first of all, it'd probably be extremely, extremely long, extremely rambly, but also because the story I just read, I need to talk about. So, uh, again, this is for New Rolls November, which I've talked about in every video that I've, uh, done New Rolls November for, and I'm not going to say continue, that's probably like one of the last times I'm going to actually go into what that is, but if you don't know, that is a, uh, science a science fiction event hosted by the Bookish Bryans, uh, with a lot of other co-hosts, myself included, and we are reading short form science fiction, less than 250 pages. Uh, and we have different categories each week. This week, the category is terrestrial, that is anything set on Earth. Uh, and today I've read two stories so far. The first story was not one of the stories I had uh, determined ahead of time to read, but I read this morning because Greg over at another Bibliophile Reads read it and he quite liked it. And that is The Monster uh, by uh, Gerard Klein? I believe it's Gerard. Uh, Gerard, yes. I couldn't remember if it's Gerard or Gerald. And, uh,. This is a first contact story about a woman who is home uh, alone when an alien lands in the park in her community and um, she's worried because her husband is coming home. Uh, and the story is wonderful. Uh, very creepy in points. Uh, and it's for the story you're questioning what the motives of the alien is, and she worries about her husband, and then, spoiler alert, everything past this will be spoilers for this. I will link in the description a place you can skip to if you don't want to hear spoilers for this, and then a place you can skip to for the next story if you don't want to hear spoilers for that. Um, well, actually, that, never mind, I'll that point to it. Um, and the build up of the story is that the woman, as she is watching the television, finds out that the monster is speaking with her husband's voice, which is very creepy and very uh, reminiscent to me of Annihilation, the Southern Reach trilogy by uh, Jeff Vandermeer, where uh, the woman, the woman narrator's uh, husband, comes back but is different, is. Uh, kind of controlled or uh, mimicked or whatever by some kind of unknowable entity that may be the Southern Reach itself or that may be the cause of the Southern Reach or it may be something different. The book doesn't actually tell you. Annihilation doesn't. Um, and I got a lot of throwbacks to that or more I got a lot of uh, similar feelings to that, sorry in Monster, that is. And, uh, the woman rushes to the park where she meets the monster, which is a gelatinous creature, very Lovecraftian in description. Uh, and it talks to her, and then she goes into it, kind of devours her. But in there, she meets with her husband inside of the gelatinous mass. Uh, it's, it's cut. The man's consciousness and her con and her consciousness are within the monster, uh, still alive, uh, filling out this creature's uh, psyche in a sense, uh, 
uh, it is described as being like a bowl that just doesn't have anything and sort of fills up human consciousness. Uh, like we fill our own consciousness with emotions. Um, and at the end, it questions, I, I think, who, first off, who is the monster? In the same way as something like Frankenstein does. Uh, because the very last scene, you have the people arriving with their flamethrowers to kill the creature. And it doesn't tell you whether or not the creature gets away in time, or whether or not the, the men burn the creature alive at the same time killing the husband and wife. Uh, but it was a really good story, though, uh, and I highly recommend it. Now, the one that I just finished, I read out of Ben Bova's The Hall, The Science Fiction Hall of Fame, Volume 2A. This is a collection of novellas, and I actually am planning on reading all of these stories this month. And I read the first one today, and that is uh, Baby is Free by Theodore Sturgeon. Uh, and I loved this story. Uh, there's a lot of times when I talk about books on this channel where I talk about them and I feel like I, I, I'm excited that I've read them. I'm excited that I did read them that I was, when I was reading them. I see all the cool ideas they play with, there are, there are parts that just whisk me away, the beautiful prose, whatever. But I don't feel it deep in my uh, very being, I guess, that kind of passion while I'm reading it. Uh, this story, though, grabbed me. Uh, it follows a, uh, a man named Gerald, who... Well, not a man, it's actually a young teenager who um, is going to a psychiatrist because he's trying to figure out why he murdered someone. And he is discussing, and he's going into his past, which is a very strange past where he lived with a man named Lone, who had other children in his care. Uh, two young... Uh, black children who it describes very early on as being able to teleport around and they their clothes fall out and it's very very weird when that happens uh a baby whose name is just baby and jamie a uh a girl who seems to communicate with baby and who seems to be able to use telekinesis and who spends all of her time painting. And uh, from there, it's, he narrates to the psychiatrist, going back and forth between the setting of the uh, uh, psychiatry meeting and the, uh, and the main character's past. Uh, and it kind of builds up to the final reveal. Uh, the story is really good. I will uh, talk about spoilers here in a bit, but uh, I want to get, out, get the non-spoiler stuff out of the way, so if you want to read this, I will let you know when I'll start talking about spoilers. Um, and at that point, I'd say just stop watching the video. Um, but uh, the story is very well written. Uh, the, uh, the characters don't get a lot of depth to them. And some of the motivations are quite strange, particularly the man alone. Uh, but at the same time, I really liked the way the weirdness is handled. Because at the beginning, Gerald is just um, kind of a street urchin. And he's only eight years old. And then he comes and lives with Lone and their kids. And he doesn't seem to really worry and think too much about the fact that the two girls are teleporting around the room and that uh, Baby is communicating somehow 
by my by his mind, and Janie is moving things with her mind. It's never really explained. Uh, and he doesn't seem to worry too much about it because he is a child. And so I thought that was very interesting the way it um you would naturally assume as like this you'd have the ki the main character approach the weirdness and be shocked, but because of perhaps his own desensitized life, it doesn't confuse him all that much. Um, and I liked that a lot. Now I do want to talk a bit more about spoilers though, uh, particularly because the idea that it brings forward towards the end is very, very compelling. And that idea is that Loan uses um, these kids to create a, a entity which he calls a gestalt, uh, a kind of amalgamation of their different beings, of their different uh, abilities. So the telepaths who is uh, the main character. You find out that he has the ability to look into other people's minds. And he gives a, a brief uh, uh, statement at one point in the story that he is good at getting people to do what he wants. Uh, so mind control. Along with being able to read people's minds and people's experiences. And there is, of course, again, Janie, who can... Uh, move things with their mind. There is uh, the twins who can uh, who can teleport. And there is Baby who is actually a computer. The story goes on to uh, talk about how uh, Baby never really grows up. It gets bigger. Uh, but at one point the woman that they go to live with at one point um, refers to the, ba to the baby as a a mongoloid idiot, so not exactly winning in the Department of uh, progress Progression, but this is also a story written in... When was this written, actually? I don't remember. Uh, 60s, I think? I might be wrong about that. Um, but the, the, the baby seems to be perhaps uh, disabled. And so e even as it grows up, it doesn't really, doesn't communicate, it doesn't move around, but it does keep sending out information as a computer. Um, and I kind of touched, when I when I mentioned that, I kind of touched on another one of the aspects that's interesting about this book. It is disturbing. It is actually extremely disturbing, particularly because of the fact that it's about children. When you read about uh, the um, the condition of the of the kids, particularly before they when they're still living this alone, before they go to live with the other woman, um, it's described how no one approaches baby, how uh, the uh, the two girls kind of communicate in a weird way, how they, again, yeah, zip around the room naked, and, uh, how it would seem, especially to an outside observer, and really is, uh, a kind of neglect. Uh, it also touches on racism. The woman who they go to live with, although presented in a sympathetic light, is herself a racist. She is a racist towards the two, uh, two young black girls. Um, and that was one of the interesting parts to me, how the, uh, how Janie and Gerald, Gerald, I think it's actually Gerald, I don't want to keep pronouncing it Gerald, Gerald are, um, don't really think about racism. They don't really say, they're, they have this tiny microcosm of a community. And they don't really uh, think about the fact that the girls are a different race. Um, which is very interesting. But yes, the story is quite creepy at points. 
uh, the way it describes the guest adult, the way it describes the kids, how they live, uh, does kind of leave one cringing. I don't think this is a bad thing, I think that's intentional. I think it's doing what it says to do, but it is there. Uh, and maybe thinking this would actually make it for a really good um, short or long movie. The way it kind of unfolds the information, to me, uh, is is how the best like horror movies and best thriller movies kind of unfold uh, the story. Uh, so... And I just love that. I think the only yeah the only real issue I had with it was probably the characterization, but again it is a very short story. It's seventy pages, uh, but it definitely makes me want to read some more *Fear Surgeon*. And luckily enough, I do have. Uh, this. More Than Human, which I believe is kind of a, uh, if I'm, yes, uh, it's actually the full story. Baby, Baby is Free is part of this collection, so I may actually read this sometime this week also. I was already planning on reading more than a human, uh, and maybe I'll read it in the next few days actually, so I can talk more about Gestalt, the homo Gestalt, the Superman, it's not the super ego. Uh, very Freudian, very, uh, very weird though. But either way, I quite like this, this, uh, the story. I also like Monster, though, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is participating in New Worlds November who has not read either of these stories. I would imagine most people have probably read Baby is Free, though, since Fido Surgeon is a pretty well-known science fiction author, at least classical, classic science fiction. But if you've read Baby is Free, do let me know. What did you think about it? Um, did you, uh, I agree that the story is pretty creepy, pretty weird. Uh, or is that just my reading of it? Either way, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're getting a lot of reading done. And I hope I get a lot more reading done today, too. I'm thinking about maybe reading another short story next. Uh, something shorter than what I read now. I want to leave my novellas uh, for the rest of the week. I might read something out of this, though, since I just bought this. Either way, though, I hope you're having a great day. Bye, BookTube.